In this example, the motion of a mass on a spring is modelled by the differential equation x double dot, so d2x by dt squared, is equal to minus 25x, where x is the vertical displacement of the mass at time t. Part A, find the general solution of the differential equation. Right. So, if we've got x double dot plus 25x is equal to 0, just adding 25x to both sides, then the auxiliary equation would be equal to, well, would be m squared plus 25 is equal to 0. So that means that m squared would have to be minus 25. So m is plus or minus 5i. So the general solution would be x is equal to some constant c1 cosine of 5t plus some constant c2 sine of 5t. Part B. Find the particular solution given that initially x equals 8 and x dot, so dx by dt, is equal to 2. So initially means that t is 0. So when t is 0, x is equal to 8. So we would have 8 is equal to cosine of 0 is 1. So we would have c1. Sine of 0 is 0. So c1 is equal to 8. That's it. Now, when t is 0, x dot is equal to 2. So I need x dot. So differentiate this. So we would have minus 5 c1 sine of 5t plus 5 c2 cosine of 5t. So 2 is going to be equal to, if t is 0, this is going to be 0. And cosine of 0 is 1. So I get 5 c2. So that means that c2 has got to be 2 fifths. So I've now got c1 and c2. So therefore, x is equal to uh, 8 cosine of 5t plus 2 fifths sine of 5t. So that is my particular solution. Now, the next bit, write down the period and amplitude of the motion. I can't do that initially, or straight off the bat, without writing it in harmonic form, in the equivalent form. So, 8 cosine of 5t plus 2 fifths sine of 5t is going to be equal to a times sine of omega t plus epsilon. Now, of course, the omega here is going to have to be equal to 5. Right. So, using the compound angle formulae, we can write that as... Um, well, we can expand it using the compound angle formulae, and I'll let you do that if you need to do that. Um, we can go straight in to work out a and epsilon. So a would be equal to the square root of the 8 squared and the 2 fifths squared. Okay, so that would be the value of a. So we should get 2 fifths of root 401. So that's my exact value for a. Then epsilon, well, tan of epsilon, is equal to the c1 over the c2. So arc tan of um, the 8 over the 2 fifths. Now, as I said, if you're a little bit unsure about getting this the right way round, then use the compound angle formula and do it step by step. OK? Um, because what you should get from that 
is that the 8 is um, A times, um, it'd be the A sine of epsilon. And the 2 fifths will be A cosine of epsilon. So you need the sine one divided by the cosine one to get the tan one. So the eight divided by the two fifths. Okay, so you can kind of, you can try and do the stages in your head if you like. So eight divided by two fifths is 20. So this is arc tan of 20. Now make sure you're in radians. We should get 1.520837931. Okay, so what this is telling me for part C is I can write x as equal to 2 fifths root 401 sine of 5t plus 1.52. 0, 8, etc. Okay, so the period of the function would be 2 pi, because sine usually has a period of 2 pi, divided by 5. So 2, well, 2 pi for 5. I was just about to write 2 fifths pi, but that's fine. And then your amplitude is the two-fifths root 401. Okay, so that's where we're at. Now, sketch a graph of the solution. Now, of course, this is easier when you've got a graphical calculator, okay? But we're going to give it a go. Here's t, and here's x. Now, the first thing to note is you probably want an idea of where you're starting. So when t is 0, remember, um, x is equal to 8. OK, that's what we had up here. So when I substitute t as 0 into this, I should get 8. I mean, you can, you can check that if you want. Nice little check. Okay, so if I just put in 1.5208, I get 7.99998482, etc. Okay, so yeah, we're starting at 8. And you might want an idea of what 2 fifths times root 401 actually is, and that's 8.00993758. So it's very close to 8. So actually, the curve does something like this. Okay, so it's going to go, if I want it, something like that. That's going to be a 2, not 2 pi, uh, the 2 pi of 5, rather. Okay, that's 8, the, oh sorry, the um, 2 fifths root 401. That's 8. That point there is your minus two fifths root four oh one. Okay. Um, if you want to know where it's crossing here and here, then um, we could put this equal to zero. Um, and then solve that. So that would make the this value we would need to be at, uh, we could do it at 0, we could do it at pi. So the first time would be pi, wouldn't it? So if we put it equal to pi, so take away inverse tan of 20, and then divide by 5, we should get that as 0 0.324 there. 
And that point, if I put it equal to 2 pi, so I'm just putting what's inside this bracket equal to pi to get that, and equal to 2 pi to get the next solution. And divide by 5. 0.952. Let's just check how close that is to 2 pi over 5. And that's 1.256. So that seems reasonable. OK, so this one is a little bit more fiddly to sketch than the previous example. Uh, we had to do a bit more work to it, but that's how we can work through this problem.